Hey everybody, this is Ray and Andrew with REH CPA. Today we're going to talk about vacation rental properties. We know a lot of our clients out there have vacation rental properties. I uh, wanted to go over the tax implications of having one. It gets kind of complex and it depends on some facts and circumstances of how you need to report that and how it can affect your taxes. I was going to see if Andrew could kind of go over those with us today and uh, give us some education on it. Yes, yeah, so like I said, it gets complex and it depends on the situation. So some of the things that the IRS starts looking at to figure out what bucket to drop you in of how it's going to be taxed is what level of services you provide to those tenants, to those tenants occupying that space and um, how long you are renting the, the home to these individuals. So if everybody's like seven days or less, that's going to put you into this one category of people where it's going to be reported on a Schedule it's like C. A, it's like a business it's that like gets a business. reported on a Schedule mm -hmm. C. Also, if you are providing substantial services, so it's kind of, a, again, it's a, it's a whole facts and circumstances test, but if you are providing, you know, towels, linens, daily, toiletries, like daily doing maid a service. daily maid service, um, those are all substantial services where you're dealing with these tenants on a, a daily basis. So it's almost like you're running a hotel. It, it is. how the IRS looks at it. And it's a hotel and it's a business. It is. Point. So if you're providing substantial services and if you're renting that home for seven days or less on average, then you're going to be put into the bucket of being reporting your income and expenses on a Schedule C. Gotcha. Versus if you aren't doing any of that stuff and it's just a long term, say you just have a rental house and someone has a year long lease and they're just there and you're just really sitting back collecting a check, just dealing with any issues that may pop up from time to time, that's going to be reported on Schedule E. Gotcha. So there's some differences though. So if you're, so let's say you are a Schedule C, mm -hmm. what are the some of the good things about, if you do have to report on Schedule C, what are some of the good things? Yeah, so if you're on a Schedule C, a good thing would be if your rental runs a loss, if you're, if you're running a loss on your rental activity and you materially participate in that activity, then you can deduct that loss against other sources of income in your tax return. So it could essentially offset a W-2 wage or something like gotcha. that. So you can deduct that loss against other sources of income. If it is um, producing income, taxable income, then you and you materially participate, then it's going to be subject to self-employment tax, which is a 15.3% tax. We've right. talked about that in other videos, right. but right. so if you run a loss, it's probably a good thing for you to be on there. But if you're if you're running a profit, it might it may not, not be. be the and best. it all depends on everybody's facts and circumstances, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. so uh, let's say it's on a Schedule E. What are the what are the good what are the good things, bad things about being on a Schedule E? Yeah, so Schedule E again it's got its good things and bad bad parts so if it's a if it's a loss if that rental activity is running a loss you're going to have a hard time deducting that loss in most situations because it's going to get wrapped up in what's called passive activities it's going to be a passive activity loss so um, you don't lose it it's just not immediately deductible against other sources of income right and being so, able to take that loss there are some income things right there, there are like some limitations where you may be able to take some of it and mm -hmm. you phase out over time yeah. but just in general, you run the risk of those things getting, being passive and getting wrapped up and not being able to take the current deduction. For yeah. That. So conversely, if, if it's income producing, taxable income producing, then that income is not subject to self-employment tax. So you don't have to pay that additional tax on the income. So definitely some, some, some differences between their how they're both taxed. They both have their good parts and bad parts, but it really just depends on what level of services you're providing on a daily basis and how long your tenants and, and are And just staying. to clarify, it's not a choice. Yeah. You don't have a choice to choose Schedule E or Schedule C, whichever one fits you better. Yep. You gotta look at the facts and circumstances mm -hmm. of your situation and whether or not it has to go on Schedule C or it has to go on Schedule E. Yep. Uh, we deal with that a lot. So if you guys have any questions on that or you need any help determining where it needs to go, Schedule E or Schedule C, give us a call, shoot us an email, we'll be happy to help you out.